Hi, I'm Andrew Klein, owner and CEO of Smart Barn, and today I'm going to talk about technology on your farm. First, a little bit about me. Uh, I grew up in western Ohio, farming hogs with my dad. I'm a combat veteran in the U.S. Army. I've got an engineering background, chemistry bachelor's, materials engineering, uh, master's degree, and working with my dad uh, on his farm and, and realized that the monitoring just wasn't quite where it needed to be for his operation. So started Smart Barn in 2014 and it and it's grown from just my dad's barn now to hundreds of barns across the U.S. and Canada. Doing both monitoring on uh, for alarms and also data analysis, trending, those kind of things. So first off, why are you here? Well, you're probably farming some sort of livestock or poultry and if even in my lifetime i mean farming livestock farming in general has massively transformed gone are the days of riding on the fender of a alice chalmers in my, in my dad's field now you're you, you, there's not a tractor or combine out there that doesn't have some sort of gps adjustable heated seats that works you know you've got ipads in your in your chicken barn just the number of, of options available to you can just be daunting and, and overwhelming for sure. And there's all sorts of marketing and promises and things telling you that you need to implement this on your farm, you need to be doing this or that, and making a decision on what to use is a challenge, much less even figuring out all these buzzwords like Internet of Things and big data. I mean... It's hard enough when you're when you're building a new barn for your, your chickens or you're upgrading some controls in your hog farm to, to decide what alarm system you need, what what thermostat, what ventilation controller, when there's so much out there and everybody's telling you what you need. So where do you start? I like to break it down very simply. You know, you, you want to start small. You want to start with what you can do, what you can afford, what you understand before you work your way up to something much more complicated, get into, into data analysis or anything. And the best place to start, honestly, is you want to prevent your, your worst case scenarios before you worry about anything else. So I like to show this, this kind of breakdown of, of move, you want to start at a, at a reacting to issues end of the scale, a preventing problems end of the scale, and as, as you, you learn and your operation grows and you understand your needs better, then you want to move towards a more proactive and predictive kind of approach with your data and sensing, but you got to start small. So how do you start small? You want to look at that, at that catastrophic loss. What's the worst case scenario? Well, on a livestock farm, catastrophic loss is generally the result of the ventilation going out or your temperatures getting too high. So in your hog, poultry, turkey, laying, broiler, finishing, nursery operation, whatever it may be, you want to know whether it's winter or summer, fall, spring, power's on, your temperature's good, your fans are running. I mean, you've seen the news stories about so and so losing all their animals and a lot of them don't even make don't even make the news but a thunderstorm rolls through the generator doesn't kick on and you're in trouble before you know it so you need to you need to cover your basics it may it might seem obvious it definitely feels obvious to me but you'd be surprised how many farms don't have some sort of alarm not like no alarm whatsoever uh, I would say at a very bare minimum, you need some sort of power outage or alarm that's got a battery backup at it that would set off a strobe or a siren at your farm. Now, that's, in my opinion, bare minimum, but if you live out at your site, that could be good enough. Have some sort of some sort of alarm outside the barn, and, and when it goes off, you can hear it, it'll wake you up, and that's, that's probably adequate, especially if you've got a sm really small operation you live on site. Uh, I would say that's probably not good enough, though, especially if, you've, if you're starting to have thousands of animals, you've got a larger confinement facility, you need some sort of dialer. And honestly, I would be surprised if it's not a requirement of your insurer or of, of the company that's contracted you to grow. You need monitoring that power, monitoring temperature, and, and beyond that even, I mean, a backup generator of some kind is definitely a must. 
Now, most systems that are going to do this are limited in their capabilities, but you can at least protect against most of your, or at least some of your issues with a system like this. Some of the challenges you're going to run into are if you don't live on site, if you don't have someone there 24-7, then a local alarm of some kind, a siren for a power outage is not really going to do you a whole lot of good. If you can't get a phone line, which is getting harder and harder to get out in rural areas, you know, the dialers are going to be a challenge. So you need to either, you're going to have to consider your exact situation and figure out what you need to get to. Beyond preventing the catastrophic loss of some kind, then once once you've got that covered, once you know your generator's working, once you've you've got a regular routine of checking that, once you have a dialer or an uh, alarm system like Smart Barn in place to, to cover you if the temperature goes out of out of range or the power goes out, then you can start moving to the next level. And most livestock facilities, that's going to start looking like improving your animal welfare, so, so your yield, your productivity increases. How are you going to get there? Well, with a system like Smart Barn in place, you're going to be, you can continuously log things like temperature, water usage, and then you can take a look at that and use what you learn from your data to improve the comfort and welfare of the, of the animals that you're raising which is going to result in an increase in productivity over the long run. There's been numerous studies done showing that, that better control of the living conditions and for livestock and poultry result in better health, faster maturity, better yields, and simple things like tuning your ventilation system based on recorded temperatures to, to bring them under tight control can result in big payoffs. So the thing, I mean, within the, the poultry or egg industry, things like the egg on-farm egg storage, they're, they're rat, like a seven degree variation is, is allowed, but even variations as small as two degrees can reduce your hatchability. So keeping things in tight control can result in big payoffs. I mean, on the, on the more livestock related front, so with, with hogs or, or dairy or, or the beef industry, I mean, billions of dollars are lost every year due to heat stroke. So understanding what the temperature is like in your facility and then figuring out how to solve problems based on the data is, has the potential for a large payoff in your operation. Here's a, here's a specific example of how one of our farmers used smart barn and temperature logging to help with the conditions in his in his facility and then also with the, ultimately in the productivity of, of both his day-to-day -day and the, the bird health. So he was able to monitor the temperature over time after a new flock went in and then find that he was seeing these day-to-day -day larger variations than, than were healthy or what he wanted on his farm. And so he looked at the data logs that we he's able to collect using Smart Barn, and he was able to tune his system better and better over time so the temperature stayed within a lot tighter control. And you can see this is in November, so the temperatures aren't excessive, and he was seeing these 10, 20-degree variations, and he was trying to bring those with or less than plus or minus five degree variations, which can be hard in an 800 foot barn. But this data allowed him to see what was going on, allowed him to tune things and get it under better control. Other things that you can look at then if you're, if you're tracking and, and sensing variables across your farm are water usage. You can identify outages or leaks, prevent, prevent dehydration. You can control the physical or biosecurity. You can control and monitor lighting and Make sure that everything is running smoothly and optimize things so that you're, you're getting the best feed conversion. You're getting the best laying. Things are going, your productivity is going the best it can on the farm. Above and beyond that, I mean, one of the big promises of technology on the farm is that it's going to reduce your labor. Everybody knows your labor costs are going up. Struggle in agriculture for decades now. And it's not getting any cheaper, so we're, everybody's got to do more with less and make that stretch that labor as far as they can. What's that look like? Well, in, I'd like to 
kind of walk through a case study of one of our larger customers, and, and they're, they've been with us for a while. It's McFarland Pheasants in Janesville, Wisconsin. So they've got several sites spread across Wisconsin, Missouri, Arkansas, and managing each of these sites. I mean, the pheasant raising is a very specialized industry, so managing all these different sites is a very big challenge for them. And they started out using our system just as, as an alarm system. They were preventing against that catastrophic loss. But with Smart Barn, you're able to add sensors as you need them. So slowly over time, McFarland has added more and more capability to their system to the point where now they have hundreds of sensors at their different sites. And the workers at those different sites, whoever manages a site, is able to see only what they need to see. So they can log in on their smartphone, they can receive alarms from the farm that they're responsible for and manage what they need to log their temperatures, record their water usage, everything they need right there. But they can the data also goes back to their central headquarters in Janesville. So the, the manager of who oversees everything as a whole, they're they're veterinarians who are helping with health, they're their feed specialists, nutrition specialists who are helping plan out what the birds need to eat, they can access all this data and use it to inform their decisions. And no one's having to harass anybody for pen and paper, clipboard records. They're, you're not having to get a coffee-stained copy of the temperature log for the high lows for, the, for that barn. You can just log in, pull the data, and do your analysis and inform your decisions without a bunch of extra labor so it's absolutely helped them be more efficient helped them to manage a lot of different sites without having to implement a bunch of, of manual record keeping or, or really add a whole lot of labor to the process finally i mean the ultimate goal and what you i'm sure you've been to conferences i'm sure you've you've seen the talks over and over i mean machine learning artificial intelligence big data these things have it started out as a buzzword just a few years ago, and now I mean, you hear about them all the time. And, and there's companies dedicated to selling you data on the farm and data analytics and these sort of things. And, and it's, it's big money, and they promise you big, big payoffs. You know, I, But what I'd like to kind of say on this one is it is tough. So I, 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 there's no easy answer on this one. And anybody who says that they've got an easy solution, I would argue is is kind of making stuff up because data analytics is not, an, it's a science, it's a hard science. And there are numerous people with PhDs banging their heads against these problems at, at universities like Ohio State University. And real science is being done and has to be done to, to get to answers. And it's not just a simple like plug in your data and boom you're making millions so i kind of want to be a little cautious on caution folks on that front and say it's harder than it looks but having a good record right now with something like smart barn that is logging everything recording everything keeping years of data that may not result we may not be feeding it through a machine learning algorithm you might not be there at this point however it definitely will not hurt you it will help you be more proactive here's from a simple just a very simple standpoint this isn't big data this is just someone having better insight into their farm because of constant recording this example right here shows again farmer is tracking temperature in his barn and he's got an alarm set point set at 90 for his for his standard set point and but he's logging in on a smartphone. He's taking a look at the at the chart, and you can see for most of this day, it's it's pretty constant. He tunes the ventilation a little bit first thing in the morning, raises the temperature a tiny bit, but everything's looking great. Well, in the afternoon, he started to notice the temperature was creeping up, and over time, it kept getting hotter and hotter till the point where he finally went out to the farm, took a look at what was going on, and it turns out several of his fans weren't operating correctly things weren't going as intended now nothing was in danger at that point because several fans are operating the ventilation is still on but what he told me when i talked to him was he caught this issue around 5 30 or 6 got it resolved went to dinner no big deal if you look at the trend on this chart 
it would have kept the temperature kept creeping up he'd have gotten an alarm where let's say around 8 or 9 p.m he said at, at 9 p.m he wants to be getting ready for bed he doesn't want to be out of the farm so being able to be proactive get out to that farm get things taken care of before dinner is a huge benefit to him and not having it i mean he, his phone didn't blow up with alarms even he caught it before it was an issue got his good night's rest how are you going to get to all this capability well smart barns can start you out small we can we've got a cellular monitoring system power outage power sensors monitoring for power outages that'll that'll send you alarms that gets you at the base again and then depending on what you need you can grow your capability from there so you're you're monitoring with the best of them you're you're doing the whole thing you're recording your water usage you're looking at your data you're doing everything but you don't have to start at this complicated end of things that that may feel overwhelming right now you can start small you can build from there and before you know it you're going to be doing more than than the the top of the line high powered corporations are doing with all their data because you're actually monitoring what's going on in your farm you're proactive rather than reactive and you're able to to deliver on some of these technology dreams you've been you've been told are out there without having to, to spend a huge you know, spend a fortune or or have a degree in computer science to get the job done so just to summarize bottom line start small cover your basics and as you start to figure these things out add on as you get comfortable you don't have to dive in and spend the big bucks you know and i like i said before i wouldn't worry a huge amount about big data or analytics or machine learning or any of these things until you understand until you're certain you're prevented against the worst and of course feel free to shoot us an email give us a call if you need help we'll definitely talk to you tell you more about what we do help you figure out what's right for your farm so that you're covered and you're, you're making the best decisions with the information you've got and, you, and you're moving ahead into the future without having to figure it all out yourself thank you very much there's our contact info if you need it we're looking forward to talking to you soon